This is CAD 102 and I'm going to begin by doing a relatively fun project which is a guitar amplifier. Uh, early model Fender using tubes and we're going to do a two tube Fender Champ app equivalent circuit and we're going to show you how to draw that in CAD. We're going to take our basket of components we made earlier and we're going to begin and draw this tube amp and it's going to be uh, about three parts on this so we'll start with part one the beginning of doing the tube amp in CAD for a schematic diagram uh, select our paint program and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my basket of um, components that I made in the previous show and I'm going to copy these and then I'm going to paste them to a new project and so I paste and now I have my basket of components and I'm saving it and we're going to save our components so now we have our copy of our components in our new project so, so now I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to open the image properties box and I'm going to resize the work surface that we're using in paint so that we'll have plenty of room to do our project and so we keep all our basket of components over to the left and we grab them as needed and I'm just resizing here so that we can have plenty of room to work with by just typing in a larger figure for the height and the width in the properties and I'm going to then shrink it a little bit you can see we have a lot of space and you can see we have a lot of space to work with now. So let's, let's just make this a simple tube tube amplifier, something like the Fender Champ Amp that used two pentodes, as I recall. We'll have to figure it out. And so when we go to make our Champ Amp, we're going to need a pentode tube. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make two pentodes and I'm going to put them over on the right so that this will give us a general idea of the sizing and placement of the major components and then I'll put in all the smaller components around them so everything is pretty well dimensionally correct. Now I'm going to work on my input so I'm going to get a quarter inch jack. What I'm going to do is we're going to take our uh, triangle tool and we're going to invert it and then we're going to uh, cut off one end to make a little chevron here and that will be our contactor that would go to the uh, tip of the uh, quarter inch jack and so now I'm going to bring a line out from the input to the tube that would show us approximately where we need to have our jack going to and it's getting a little complicated so we're going to expand it some and so let's get this line evened out where it's at the right place and now we're going to bring our chevron down and connect it to the line which this is the input now I'm going to have to add some components in between to make it correct but at least right now I'm getting the right sizing on everything so I'm going to come down here and add a line and drag it out to make it go to the chevron correctly okay now we have to have an impedance matching uh, resistor, usually 75 K ohms, and we're going to have to have a capacitor input because you want the capacitor for isolation and you want the 75 K ohm resistor for impedance matching. This amp could be used for a guitar, it could be uh, used for a radio, if you had like a radio tuner but didn't have an amplifier, or a phonograph if you had the right impedance matching and you could feed it into this amp but most likely it's a tube amp because it's probably going to have a little bit of distortion the way we're designing it okay right now I'm in the middle of putting a ground in see how I did the three little wires and I'm going to make a copy of that ground and put it in my basket of components and we'll get rid of this little dot over here that was made when I tried to click off of it and we'll bring this down a little bit and what we're going to do is I'm showing here that we have a chassis ground as part of the uh, quarter inch socket and so we're not going to connect this to anything but it's just showing that 
the input to this amp is a uh, ground and a input to one of the grids on the tube after I put in some other components to make it correct but right now we're just sizing so I'm resizing this ground I'm, I'm then going to work on getting the size correct and right now I pulled it out of the way do a little more resizing here and make it more dimensionally correct and so there's our input uh, one quarter inch tip sleeve input and now we need to add our uh, components in here. So how are we going to add a component after I've drawn the line? Well, let's begin with our capacitors. So we're going to put this capacitor in line. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to just paste it. Make, grab a copy of it and paste it. And we're just going to drag it here and just make it part of that line. See, and it just popped right in. Now I'm not. I'm not. This is probably not electrolytic, so I'm going to cut out that positive symbol, and we'll probably size this up a little bit better so it looks like it's more proportional to the components around it by doing the select tool and cutting. I'm going to then move this out some so we have some space to work with on our input plug. I mean our input socket for our quarter-inch connector. Now we've got to stick in a resistor that I'm going to say is a 75k ohm resistor. It's there for input impedance, getting the input impedance correct. Um, you can have a lot of experimentation with this value depending on your distortion level or what kind of device you're hooking up to it. So now I've put this resistor in line with the capacitor and uh, that's impedance matching and lots of times on the uh, fender they had two inputs and then they had a switch on this input so one was a high impedance one was a low impedance and so when when this input had a switch it would short this resistor to ground and then the other one would be your low impedance input but I'm just making it simple and putting in uh, this input with a 75k ohm resistor and uh, capacitor the capacitors isolation it passes AC but doesn't pass DC. That's one of the rules about capacitors. Now we've also got to have another capacitor or another uh, resistor that goes to ground. It's going to be around a 5 meg resistor. And you have to have this here on this grid for grid leak bias because if you don't have grid leak bias the tube isn't going to forward conduct. I'm resizing this resistor a little bit so that uh, it fits in the schematic a little bit better and then we're going to zoom in a little bit where we can work with this area that's a little bit tight in here and I want to extend this line up to where it goes to the grid connection I'm, I just, I'll begin by straightening out this little spot right here where when we cut, cut it it didn't look too good so I'm fixing that with a little pencil tool and then we're going to come here and just do the uh, select tool to bring the line directly and perfectly in contact with that uh, grid connection and so now we have the resistor for our grid leak bias connector on I guess this would be a 6SJ7 pentode that we'd be using um, the 6SJ7 was actually it actually came out in the 1930s and it was very popular for guitar amps and a lot of other purposes. Yeah, I believe it was RCA made it. I think GE made it too. I'm not sure. But it was around for a long time. It was an octal tube, as I recall. And uh, very common for vintage guitar amplifiers. Cleaning up that ground. I'm going to take this ground and copy it. And I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to connect it to the bottom of my resistor which establishes our resistor to ground for grid leak bias. If you didn't have grid leak bias, the tube wouldn't forward conduct. And so that's very important. So we have impedance for our AC signal coming in. The capacitor decouples the DC and couples the AC, which is a signal from our guitar or whatever. And it, it goes to that grid and modulates the flow. But we always have to have our grid leak bias so that we can uh, we can have forward conduction. Now another thing we do to give ourselves a little more uh, 
biasing on this, I, because things are so tight, I'm going to remove uh, this uh, second grid, and we're and uh, it's not remove it, but I'm going to connect to it from the other side. And what we do is we connect the plate, or the, not the plate, the cathode, to the third grid. And so I'm going to draw a line like this. See, I'm connecting, uh, restoring our original connector to the grid, and we have these two that aren't connected. And I'm cleaning this up a little bit too. And even though they don't look like they're connected, that's just saying that that wire runs under the other wire, but it's still a wire connected. So we're connecting our our cathode to the top grid on this tube. And that's for biasing. And so uh, we're then going to probably want to connect to the anode on the top. So I'm going to cut out this lead coming from the anode to the left just by using my select tool. We're going to cut that out and then we're going to restore our glass envelope. You have to have your evacuated glass envelope for this to work. And so we've got that done and uh, so that's got our bias set up on the left hand side of the tube. And in some configurations on this um, you know you would you would actually do a, a resisted bias going between that uh, the ground and the positive voltage uh, with a splitting resistor network to bias the uh, top grid, but this way is a little simpler. Okay, so we made another uh, ground connection copy. So now we had to put a ground on our cathode because the electrons have to flow up from ground through the cathode. And uh, now I'm going to put a indicator, this little triangle that we just made, shows that that connects somewhere else in the diagram and so what that so that means that's going to the 6.3 volt filament that comes from the power supply so the filament will heat up so that you can have electron flow through the tube if you don't heat up the filament which heats up the cathode then the electrons won't flow in the tube okay so now we're going to have to connect to the center grid and we're going to have to put a bypass and, and a bias on the screen grid. The screen grid's in the middle in this case and we're going to change it so that we're connecting from the other side. So I'm going to cut this and then also cut that and so now we'll fix our glass envelope again so we have a vacuum in here. And then we're going to attach to the screen grid on the other side so that we can do our bypass and our uh, our screen grid keeper voltage. It, it, what it does is uh, it, it's, it's a voltage that uh, catches electrons that bounce back from the plate uh, so that um, you don't go into a feedback situation or have a problem that way. So that's why we have to put the bypass on the screen grid and then the biasing on the screen grid. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a bypass consisting of a capacitor and so we're going to connect the capacitor to our screen grid right here. I'll clean this up a little bit. And so we're going to take the capacitor directly. I'm going to make it a little neater by moving it up like that. I'm going to then uh, cut that out and we're going to drag this up and make a connection directly to the screen grid for our bypass capacitor that goes to the screen grid. And then that has to go to ground so I'm going to make a copy of ground down here for our bypass cap. And that cap is usually not that large, just like a .05 microfarad at around 600 volts small capacitor and then we're going to come over here with a two and make another resistor so I got to grab a resistor and make a copy of it so I'm copying the input resistor and I'm going to put it on the output of the screen grid right here get it sized up a little bit better 
because the original template was a little bit large. 15, 14. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit here. And we'll um, then take our resistor and move it over here to the connection to the screen, get, screen grid. We'll take this resistor and move it over to the connection on the screen grid. And that will actually go to the positive voltage source after it connects through a couple of other resistors for biasing.